get good quality sleep. It's hard to overstate the importance of sleep for your physical, emotional, and mental health and well-being. Your nervous system goes through a form of recovery when you sleep that is really unparalleled in your waking hours. Now the challenge now, I suppose, is as we navigate a pandemic and things become stressful, there's abundant anxiety, there's continued uncertainty, I think it's important to underline the role that sleep also has in your emotional processing. Sleep isn't just when your body and your brain recover and rebuild, but there's a really important component here of making sense of emotions. And so consequently, when you are navigating uncertainty and change as we all are, sleep probably becomes more important than ever. Not just because it's more tiring and more demanding than usual, but also again, because of this need to process emotional content. So, how can I help you sleep better? I think the best way to understand how to sleep better is to understand that it happens inevitably if you create the right conditions, right? You've got your body, you've got your brain. If you put your body and your brain in the right conditions for sleep, I would argue sleep becomes an inevitability, just like it does for most other mammals. Often I think it's humans that things get in the way of our sleep, right? So it's not a skill you need to develop necessarily. Instead, it's about reverting to a skill you've always had. So with that in mind, let's discuss the conditions that you need to put your body in and then the conditions that your brain requires. So your body. The first thing I want you to do is to get better at relaxing your body, but deliberately, right? systematically, not just waiting for it to happen at the end of some other activity, but to get good at shifting your physiological state from sympathetic to parasympathetic dominance. And the best way to do that is through a progressive relaxation exercise. There's a link to that in the notes below, and there's even another video on it on how to regulate your physiology. That is the most important thing. Because as you regulate your physiology, you deactivate your physiology, cortisol levels reduce, adrenaline levels reduce, and if you haven't done that, sleep is always going to be harder than it needs to be, right? So begin with that. In the evening, maybe even when you get into bed, but ideally a bit before that, start to shift your state. As you do that, you start to, like I said, enter this very natural state of slumber. That's my tip number one for your body. Tip number two for your body, eliminate stimulants. Now that probably sounds obvious. You know the risks of drinking caffeine too late, right? But all too often, just because of habitual practice, we do drink a coffee perhaps too late. Or what about alcohol? It might feel like you fall asleep quicker, but it disrupts your sleep cycle significantly. So even if you get your seven, eight hours of sleep, you haven't got what you needed from it, right? Because your REM is disrupted, emotional processing is disrupted, and whatever you would hope it would do to your cognitive performance, this sleep, that also is inhibited. So caffeine, not so much. Alcohol, use in moderation. Even chocolate. I notice has an impact on my sleep and my sleeping cycles, I wake up with a grogginess that I just don't have if I don't eat the chocolate. So again, I don't wanna be your coach prohibiting these life luxuries. I'm just wanting you to understand the science of creating the conditions where sleep, deep sleep, quality sleep becomes an inevitability. And now tip three, lower your core temperature. Simple thing here, when, you're, when you fall asleep, your core temperature drops significantly. It really plummets. And so what you can do as a hack is to start that process before you even get into bed. So it could just be being aware of your environmental temperature. It could be noticing your core temperature and starting to bring that down. Or think the other way around, to be very wary and ultimately avoid activities that elevate your core temperature too late. Eating food too late can be risky in that regard, and the same as exercise. 
Of course, exercise is important, but be careful if you do it too late into the evening, while it might feel great, the risk is it elevates your core temperature, and then again, delays sleep onset. So my friends, they are my top three tips to put your body into a natural state of slumber. Tip number one, relax, do it deliberately. Do that by regulating your physiology with a progressive relaxation exercise. Tip number two, avoid stimulants. Whatever stimulants you might be consuming on a daily basis, make sure there is a cutoff in the afternoon. Tip number three, deliberately reduce your core temperature. You do those three things, you're already setting yourself up for success. So now let's talk about putting your brain in the right condition for sleep. Three tips again. Tip number one, allow your brain to switch off. Now this might sound difficult, and I've actually made a whole video around how to switch off. But right now, just acknowledge, your brain needs time to shift state from active, busy, executive function and work down to the more wandering, undirected mind that tends to nod off. So again, there are certain behaviors I think we all do too much and that gets in the way of our sleep. So what can we do? Well, number one, have a deadline beyond which you stop working. So no more emails, no more slacks, no more WhatsApps, no more phone calls. And don't just think about work, think about other cognitive activity. Stop reading the news, get off your phone. Because think about it, any activity on your phone, even stuff that might feel quite nice, like casually looking at, I don't know, Instagram or some other social channel, while it might make you feel good, it's keeping your brain alert and active, right? And that needs to stop. So think about what you can do to create ideally no less than 60 minutes before you wanna fall asleep where your brain becomes ever less active. I'd encourage you to turn your notifications and your alerts off so one of those doesn't wake your brain up. I'd even encourage you to get your mobile phone out of the bedroom now, if you use it for an alarm clock, buy an alarm clock. But I really think even just for a couple of weeks to regain your relationship to sleep, get all devices out of the bedroom and you might be amazed at how much your sleep comes back for you. So that's the first piece, right? Give your brain time to shift state. Allow your brain the downtime it needs for sleep to become an inevitability. Tip number two, when we talk about your brain, is to acknowledge the importance of blue light. You need to create darkness. Now, one way to think about that, actually, is to increase your light exposure during the day. So, easy tip here, just try to get outside more during the day. Not only is it good for things like exercise and kind of, um, well, just fresh air and being outside is good for us, but it increases your blue light exposure and then, when it becomes darker, your nervous system has more of a message that it's now time to fall asleep. And then make sure that your room is completely dark. Again, stop using devices with artificially lit screens because that's the equivalent of telling your brain that it's daylight and it should stay awake. So that's my tip number two, create profound darkness. And then the third tip, and this is a little bit nuanced perhaps, is to use expectation or conditioning is another way to think about this. You are a, con a conditionable creature, right? And we can, be, we can use this to our advantage. So it could be things like having an evening routine that start to give your brain the message that sleep is coming. It could be a bath, for example, it could be a particular activity, but one thing that can be used, and this might be harder for some of you than others, is to cry, try to create consistent times that you go to bed. Now, I know that might be harder for some of you than others, but to whatever degree you can implement consistency, what you're doing is, again, you're lining yourself up for success so that your brain understands before you even get into bed that sleep is coming and it's coming soon. So they're my top three tips to put your brain in a good state, a good state for sleep. Tip number one, let it switch off. 
give it downtime, stop working, stop using your phone for at least 60 minutes before you get it back into bed. Number two, create profound darkness, the absence in particular of blue light. And tip number three, create expectation, use conditioning, create a routine so that you start to give your brain the message that sleep is coming before you get into bed. So, my friend, there you have it. You want to sleep well, get good quality sleep, create the right conditions, your body and your brain. You do the things that I've shared in this video and I promise you will start to sleep better and deeper, feeling more recovered, more energized each day.